It is a new year and a new month, and we are embarking upon our new theme for this year, the year to be. And uh, in this first month of January, each month we'll be focused on some form of being, and this month is focused on be focused. And so you'll have your church calendars, you'll see the book of the month, Visions, The Courage to See Beyond by the Reverend Dr. William D. Watley is what we're reading and studying, and we'll be using that in our Bible study this month as well. We want to be focused. So I invite your attention this morning to the gospel according to St. Matthew. The gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. And around the first verse, you'll find these words recorded in the sacred writ. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the angel took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then, then, then the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this preaching moment. I pray even now, God, that you would speak through me as you have spoken to me. Hide me behind thy cross. Lord, dip me into your pool so that I may come out with fresh water. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, the people of God together said, amen. amen. If you would help me announce my theme this morning of this sermonic presentation and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Old, neighbor. old neighbor, you are, you are. What, you eat. what you eat. You are what you eat. It was... Jean-Anthone Briot Severine, who said, Dis moi ce que tu manges, je te dirai ce que tu es. Which means, tell me what you eat, and I will tell you what you are. We have translated it to be, you are what you eat. And the reality is that what we consume helps to develop who we are. Everything that you intake in your body is a part of who you are and what you become. We, we have to recognize that there is a correlation between food and focus. That it, it is not necessarily normal to eat as much as we do and then sit on the couch and claim we got the itis. <laughs> this ain't what y'all came to hear on the first Sunday of the year. 
I'm going to preach to the lights this morning. But, but what we have in America is this, this normalized American diet that is developed after World War II. And after soldiers came back from the war, they were so skinny and famished that, that they created a new form of diet that was about eating all you can. And, and that was to help our, our soldiers get stronger. And, and the portions that we eat in America are significantly greater than what you would be uh, uh, served in other parts of the world. If you travel the world, you'll, you'll go to a restaurant. Oh my goodness, I was in South Africa and they tried to give me something to eat and I said, is this the kid's meal? <laughs> not, I'm not paying this much for this little bit until I recognize that what we eat in America is in contradiction to what is supposed to be our portion size based off of our body. Uh, the reality is that there are two distinct ages. There is a biological age and a chronological age. And some of us have a chrono we know our chronological ages based off of how many years we celebrate birthdays, but our biological age is based off of what we put in our bodies. And the reality is that many of us, because we are descendants of a people who have had to scratch and to survive, people who were, uh, who were enslaved in this country, we are used to having been fed the scraps from the table and trying to make it work to survive. And we have continued those traditions even though before we came to this land, we were eating fruits and vegetables and harvest our own food in our own villages. So we have adapted what society and the world has imposed upon us and we just call it the itis. You eat some and you can't do anything for the rest of the day. Sitting down after the dinner table and got the clicker in your hands reclining in the chair. And the reality is that the, our brains need good food to be able to move our bodies so that we can function and flourish and thrive. And as your pastor and as the vision that the Lord has given us this year, the year to be, you can't be if you're not here. You cannot be if you are not here. And we have too many uh, diseases that impact our community all because we do not take care of our bodies. Your body is a temple. It is what God has gifted you while you experience this world and you have to take care of your temple got to take care of your body because because our brains are 85 percent water and, and, and many of us are allergic to water we'll drink sprite zero unsweet tea Diet Coke, and won't drink Nestle water. And the reality is our brains cannot focus without water. Our brains need water to replenish. Our brains need water to flourish. Our brains need water to release some of those toxins and to release some of those energies that collude and confound our minds. And we must be good stewards of our bodies. And, and we must be, be faithful people to understand that if we're going to fulfill the assignment that God has for us this year, we have got to take control over what we eat. We can't just uh, eat. We can't just live to eat. We have to eat to live. And, 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 and the enemy understands this as a challenge for humanity, which is why even in the Garden of Eden, 
the, what tempted humankind was the forbidden fruit. Satan knew that if he could distract God's people with some food, he could shift them from their focus. And I have come to talk to about 330 of us this morning who are, are understand that the year that God has given us is one that if we are going to accomplish our task, we have got to stay focused. We have to be focused. And you cannot conquer the focus thing until you conquer the food thing. And, and, and the reality is that even Jesus is tempted in the wilderness by Satan. He is anointed in the Jordan River, baptized in the Jordan River, and, and the Bible says that as he emerges from the Jordan River, as John the Baptist baptizes him, a voice calls from heaven and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, and the spirit descends like a dove upon him, and, and as soon as he receives his anointing, he goes into the wilderness. The Bible says in Matthew 4, Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And I want to just let you know this morning that you can be anointed and still have a moment where you are tested by the devil. You can be anointed by God. You can be baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, can speak in tongues and do cartwheels down the aisle, and still Satan will come knocking at your door. But I want to decree and declare in this place that there is nothing that you are going to face this year that you are not anointed to be able to handle. You may find yourself in the wilderness. You may find yourself tested by the devil, but your anointing is already with you from the world water in the Jordan, and no matter what comes your way, you are anointed to be able to handle it. Somebody just put your hands on your head and say, I'm anointed to handle it. Yeah, I, it, I may get a bill. I don't know where it was going to come, but I'm anointed to handle it. I may have a doctor's appointment that may send me a result that I'm not expecting, but I'm anointed to handle it. I may have a relationship that will not survive, but I'm anointed to handle it. You are anointed to face the devil. Too many Christians, when we find ourselves tested by the devil, we think something wrong with us. God has forsaken us. God has forgotten us. But I want to encourage you today that Satan does not have permission to challenge you without getting released from God. And I want to let you know that God has told me to tell you this year, whatever Satan tries to push your way, it's only because I anointed you to be able to deal with it. You, you are not going to lose your mind. You are not going to go crazy. Whatever comes your way, I trust in God. God, I know he cares for me. I know God has my back because I am anointed to handle it. Huh. Satan comes to Jesus after 40 days, 40 nights. The Bible says Jesus was famished. And, and Satan comes to Jesus and says to him, uh, if you are the son of God, command these stones to bread. Uh, I want to let you know that you have to have, first thing this year, a distinctive diet. A distinctive diet. Because enemy will try to tempt you to command these stones into bread. But Jesus responds and says, man does not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes from the mouth of God. If you do not have a distinctive diet, you will take what other people give you and place in front of you instead of taking what you need to eat. I'm just preaching this morning. I hope y'all got your pen and your paper. You need a distinctive diet because you will get comfortable with an all-you-can-eat buffet when God has called you for a five-star restaurant mentality. 
You see everything in front of you and you just want to get it and get it and get it because it's in front of you. Instead of being distinctive, God, I don't want anything that you don't want for me this year. I only want what you want for me. Not my will, but thy will, oh Lord. I don't want to get what everybody wants from me because it will make them happy. But God, I want to make you happy. I want to glorify and honor God with my life. And I got to be distinctive with what I put in my body. I want to help you, give you some practical things this morning that that you can put in your body. We already talked about water. Eight ounces a day. Amen. A day. Did y'all drink water this morning? Amen. You got to get some water. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get me some right now. You have to have a distinctive diet. Write these foods down that will help you. You got to eat green and leafy vegetables. Leafy vegetables such as kale, spinach, collards, and broccoli are rich in brain-healthy nutrients. They will slow down cognitive decline. Now, all your collard greens can't be sautéed with fat back and (laughs) turkey necks and You got spinach with all that oil on it, grease. You know, broccoli ain't got no, it ain't got no firmness in it. (laughs) But you have to eat these green vegetables because they help your body to continue to flourish, give you vitamin K and lutein and phthalate and beta carotene. You need to ingest green leafy vegetables in your diet. Secondly, you need to eat Fatty fish, fatty fish like 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 salmon and and uh, uh, cod and canned like tuna and pollock, not just fried whiting <laughs> and fried catfish with some hot sauce and mustard and a little light bread. You gotta eat some fatty fish because they are rich in omega three fatty acids. All right. They help to lower your blood levels. And it is a protein that challenges and dumps clumps in the brain that impact uh, and provide or link to Alzheimer's disease. Third thing, hope y'all writing these down. Berries. Blueberries. Strawberries. Raspberries. And not just in your pie. Not just on top of your ice cream. But berries come from a natural plant that they they contain flavonoids from a natural plant that give you, uh, help you improve memory. It helps you with memory loss. And it found that women, uh, a study from Harvard's Brigham and Women's Hospital found that women who consume two or more servings of strawberries and blueberries each week delayed memory decline by up to two and a half years. A, 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 can, a cup of, of blueberries and that you snack on throughout the day will help you concentrate, will help you focus. Here's something else. Tea and coffee. The caffeine in your morning, morning cup of tea or coffee might do more than just give you a short-term concentration boost. Caffeine might also help you uh, uh, solidify new memories, Right? Helps you retain information. I'm a tea drinker, no co- non-coffee drinker. I don't like caffeine in my tea either because it makes me go low. And I'm already a little bit, so. <laughs> so I have to have non-caffeinated tea. Because <laughs> I'm already off the wall. And y'all don't need me to go <laughs> off the wall. No more caffeine. <laughs> And the final thing, the fifth and final thing, are are nuts. Nuts are excellent sources of protein and healthy fats, uh, and and nuts can help you improve your memory as well. They're they're full of omega-3 fatty acids, and they help link to, watch this, lower blood pressure and cleaner arteries. 
These foods are good for your brain and for your body. I want to see you live. I want to see you thrive. I want to see you focus, and, 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 and to be able to focus means you have to be able to have a distinctive diet, right? You got to learn how to choose where you want to eat at the restaurant and what you want to eat. Make your decisions for yourself. You can be out to eat with somebody else and get a salad, right? You can eat you a Caesar salad with some croutons, right? You ain't got to get the fried chicken and macaroni and cheese at Melba's. I'm just preaching to myself. So I just want y'all to know <laughs> that we have to be distinctive this year in our diet. <clears throat> Jesus says, man cannot live by bread alone because Jesus knows what he needs to put in his diet. Here's what he needs to put in his diet. You cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You also need to put the word in your diet. Yeah. The word of God is what will give you the strength and the sustenance. Oh, when we were on that October fast and all those enemies tried to tempt me with that butter pecan ice cream, I had to have the word of God to say no weapon formed against me is going to be able to prosper. You are going to have to use the word to counter what you are used to having on your plate. You got to fill your plate with something else to distract you and to help you stay focused on your assignment instead of going back to the things that you used to do. His word have I hidden in my heart so that I might not sin against God. Yeah, you got to learn how to put that word on your table. Put that word out at lunchtime. Yeah, uh, what do you want to eat? You want to order Uber Eats? No, I'm going to the Bible app. Right? I'm an Uber Eats king. Amen? <laughs> As you can see, ain't much cooking that goes on in my house, so it's, I'm an Uber Eats it, all right? <laughs> I Uber Eat it some, uh, Uber Eat it, I don't even see that's a real word, but I, I, uh, I was like, I love living in Harlem. I uber eat my own stuff, some collard greens and black eyed peas on January the 1st. I was thanking God for Amy Roos. I got my black eyed peas with my sugar on top of my black eyed peas, and I had me a time. But you have to understand that you're going to have to toggle between the apps that you're used to to be able to help you define and make sure you have a distinctive diet. So write down your meeting plan for the week. What are you going to eat? This week. So when you go to the grocery store, you know, just say, oh, I want this, and I want that, I want this, and I want that. You will go to the grocery store with a focused plan. Do you have fruits in your cart? Right? Did you get some nuts in your cart? Did you fill all five of those categories in your grocery basket so that you can eat to live instead of living to eat? Secondly, beloved, we see that Jesus being tempted in the devil. Uh, the enemy is not satisfied by Jesus' answer. So the Bible says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Not only must you have, a, have to have a distinctive diet, you must also know how to discern your decisions. Right? The devil takes him to the holy city and places him on the pinnacle of the temple. The enemy takes him to Jerusalem and places him on the top of the holy place and uses the word of God to try to get him to command the angels concerning you so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. The enemy uses scripture to try to distract Jesus from his focus. And if you don't get anything else this year, I hope that you will pray for a spirit of discernment. Everybody that know the Bible is not in the Bible. Oh my God. Everybody that come to church ain't in the church. The devil knows how to quote scripture. 
That's why people can be in church every week and still nasty and mean. It does not mean that that is a designation of your spirituality. You got to be able to discern your decisions. If you're going to focus this year, you got to hear the voice of God for your assignment. Satan thought that if I could get Jesus to the holy city, if I could get him to the place that, that he that is deemed holy, and then maybe he could be manipulated to what Satan wanted him to do. But can I tell you that God speaks to Jesus and says to him, again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. You may try me this year, but you ought to know, Satan, I know the word to you. I'm not going to manipulate me. You are not going to destroy me because you look good because you feel good because you are using the things that you know will try to convince me to do what I used to do but I'm so glad that I'm spiritually fortified this year I'm prayed up and the things I used to do I don't do anymore the places I used to go I don't go anymore I looked at my hands and my hands look new and I thank God for the spirit of discernment God says, if I give you the power, will you use it in the right place? And Satan says, if you just throw yourself down here, the angels will come and rescue you. And for too often, we have uh, a, a allowed other people to drain our power. Ooh. They come into you asking you, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? And every time you pray for them and you go to God on their behalf and they go back and do the same thing that you at, they begging you to pray about. You better learn this year to not give your oil away lightly. Everybody don't deserve your oil. Amen, lights. Everybody is not worthy of your, of your gift. They don't know how much you had to pray for, how much you had to go through to get this oil that you got right now, and they want you to give it up because they, are they just begging you and calling your phone every now and then. You better know. You better pray, God, do you need me to intervene in this right now? Because, God, if you don't, there's some other stuff I need you to do. I am not wasting any prayers this year. If you going to go do the same thing, then, baby, Go bless you. God be with you. Don't let the door hit you. With a, all I know is that I'm not losing my oil this year on people who don't deserve what God has given me. I had to go through too much hell. I had to cry too many nights to get what God has for me. Yeah. You got to discern your decisions. God has given you too much power. Ooh, don't you know whatever you ask for in his name, he's going to give it to you? Don't you know that whatever you seek, you will find, and you are wasting your gift worried about other people who ain't worried about you? Yeah. You better discern your decisions. Yeah. Uh, you got to make right choices. Because Satan will try to, 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 to taunt you with language that you're used to. And start saying things that you, that you know. And using words that are familiar to you. But you got to be careful of the, the wolves in sheepskin. Yeah. <clears throat> you got to be careful to not allow other people just because they, they dress up. Wear their good suits and their ties, that you mistake them from being people of God. Satan knows how to put on a good suit. He knows how to put on a tie. Can I tell you, he even knows how to put on a robe. But you got to have a spirit of discernment. And that's something you got to pray to God for. 
God, I need you to give me a spirit of discernment so that I can hear in your voice. I don't want to walk in the natural. I want to operate in the supernatural. I, I want to hear everything through a spiritual eye, through a spiritual ear, and see everything through a spiritual eye. Is there anybody here that knows that you, have you thank God for your spirit of discernment because it has protected you from some people who tried to stab you in your back? Your spirit of discernment has, has helped you make Make sure you didn't fall off the cliff when other people have tried to push you to the edge. I thank God for my spirit of discernment. Yeah, I ain't acting brand new. I just see you. Yeah, you ain't got to act no different. You just know. Those who know, know. I ain't got that. No, you wonder why I am. No, I know. I know what I know. <laughs> Stay away from me, because I know. All right, so my last point this morning. All right. You got to have a distinctive diet. You got to discern your decisions. And then watch this. Here's what Satan does. He says, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world. I'm in verse 8. And their splendor. And he says to them, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Yeah. The, the last thing, you got to have a determined direction. Uh, a determined direction because Satan takes him to the high mountain. Takes him to see all the kingdoms of the world and their riches and their splendor and their glory. But Satan says to him, you can have it if you fall down and worship me. Yeah. But when you are understand, when you have a determined direction, you realize that you, you, can, you can't go up and then go down to worship Satan. That if you are going to get anywhere, you got to learn how to worship your way up. See, there's a, there's a distinctive difference. Satan says, I'll show you everything at the top, but you got to worship me down. And God says, if you learn how to worship me at the bottom, I'll lift you to the top. See, you got to know the direction that God is trying to take you in your life. You cannot have any detours this year. Look at somebody say, no detours. No, no detours. I know where I'm going. I know what God has for me. No more detours. And God says, through Jesus he says away with me Satan for it is written worship the Lord your God only and serve only him and, and the Bible says when you know your direction that angels will come uh, and attend your way uh, and I'm so glad this morning that God says all night uh, and all day there are angels uh, watching over me uh, and I'm so glad this morning uh, that I know who I am. I don't have to worship Satan. I don't have to bow down at him. But there's only one name that is above every name. That at the name every knee must bow and every tongue it must confess. There's power in the name of Jesus. You are what you eat. But I know this year I'm going to put on the whole armor of God. I, I'm going to put in my body I, the word of God. I, I'm going to be focused. I, I'm going to be determined I, because I know I, that greater is he I, that's within me I, than he I, that's within the world. I, anybody here know I, that God will send angels I, to say that you should have shot I, your best shot I, in 2023. I, but since I made made it uh, to the first Sunday uh, of a new year. Uh, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, and his praises uh, shall be in my mouth. Uh, Satan, you should have shot uh, your best shot. Uh, but now I'm not sitting uh, at the buffet line any longer. Uh, I know uh, who I am. Uh, I'm going to take uh, what God has for me. Uh, what God has 
not for me. It is for me. Satan, you can't have my joy. Satan, you can't have my peace. Satan, you can't have my family. I belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Say yes. Yes. Ain't God all right? Yes. Can't you see the angels coming at your job? Can't you see the angels surrounding your child at school? Can't you see the angels all around your bedroom? Seraphim and cherubim, they all come to attend to you. Yes, Lord. You don't have to fear. You don't have to worry. For the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I've been no evil, but thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Look at this. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies so that I can eat what he wants me to eat, so that I can do. Uh, what he wants me to do uh, say yes uh, yes Lord uh, I'm at the table uh, but God uh, is the chef uh, whatever you make uh, whatever you do uh, whatever you want me to say uh, I do it uh, not my will but thy will everybody's standing all over the house Thy will be done. Hallelujah. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Every head bowed, every eye closed.